Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 752. Waza! Recorded live on September 17th, 2020. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Duststorm. I am Godzilla T. And sending in for DJ again this week, we have... He's sleeping on the job. Bob! Ah, Bob! Tom. <laughs> We've got Bob. Because, uh, unfortunately, for those that are, are haven't been keeping up, the wildfires over on the West Coast, for those in the state, is still happening in full force and unfortunately yes the west coast of the united united states is on fire literally yeah yes so so yep he's taking care of himself trying to make sure that he is keeping himself healthy or healthy enough the dog's healthy and just overall not trying to suffocate from all the smoke and dust and all the stuff that's happening in there so y- yes Tom, actually the, the, the this is fine meme works pretty appropriate for for what dj is going through unfortunately um yeah actually the smoke from those fires has been affecting us here really yeah uh the way the jet stream is it's pulling it right over kansas city i i've wondered if it has effect here because the last couple of nights looking at the sunset it looked kind of hazy but it wasn't really that overcast and it looked like a smoky haze so i don't know if we're getting a little bit of the smoke down or all the way over here on the east coast too but Mm -hmm. well no it's actually causing air quality problems here we're actually under a moderate sky cast i think it's what they call it where you know they're they're saying that you know if you have breathing problems like asthma or something like that you should Limit your outdoor Stay exposure indoors. and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, if you look, if you look around, like early in the morning when the wind's still, you can kind of see a haze up, up in the sky. It's not really down to the ground level, but you can kind of, if you're looking, you you look up at the sky, you can see like you're looking through a haze. But once the you know the winds pick up from the day, it usually clears out pretty good. So anyway, praying for everybody on the west coast. And uh, yes, I hope that everybody is safe. They're still waiting for a rain to come and try to get all the dust settled. Mm-hmm. It's, it's supposed to have been raining for the past few days, but apparently it's been so hot and the, and the dust that's in the air has been soaking up so much of the moisture from the clouds that it hasn't actually rained uh-huh. in Portland. So, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the West Coast or the, the Northwest. For Oregon? That is weird. To not have rain. Yeah, that in, in Seattle. So, please keep DJ in your thoughts and prayers. He's trying to take care of himself. His voice is kind of going out. He actually called me earlier today to kind of give me an update on things that were going on. They're having to replace filters every other day from their AC unit. And they're running out of filters, so they're trying to figure out what to do and since everyone has been pretty much requested to stay indoors there's not much you can do to actually go out and get supplies that are needed so overall it's just a very unfortunate situation that they're going through right now it's like we're in a global pandemic or something oh and there was this is wildfires round two for 2020 else yeah well in australia had the wildfires back in january yeah. Now we've got Yay, among... 2020. You suck. <laughs> yeah, the year of indoor activity. That's that's not not completely inaccurate. No. Huh. Although there's some people that have gone out and actually done a lot of stuff outdoors, just kind of socially isolated. Like I know some people that are that have tried to actually get into an exercise routine, working outdoors or like going for a run or that kind of stuff. 
I have an exercise routine. I go to work. <laughs> 14,253 steps today. Not bad. Not bad. Considering my average st- stride is two, two and a half to three feet. Yeah. I, I traveled some, I traveled a few miles today. There you go. <laughs> and then and the, I feel it. <laughs> and, and then there's some photographer friends that, uh, I know in the community that have gone out and actually done a lot of photography as well. Mm-hmm. It's been a really good time for that. Oh yeah. With everybody not hanging around, it's, it's, you're able to get a lot better shot. Yep. Tom says, my fingers have gotten to work out from coding. Does that count? <laughs> coding and gaming. Maybe for your fingers. How's the rest of your body doing? <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and jump on into the Podtacular update, starting with our stream recaps. GT, how was Fragging Friday last week? We had a lot of fun. Uh, we actually got a full lobby really quick. Well, full enough that we couldn't do anything uh, in matchmaking. Uh, we wound up in, in customs. We introduced introduced a couple of new people to Hogs from Heck. <laughs> that seems to be that one of the fun. favorites. Mm-hmm. Found a couple more games that were broken. Yay! And oh, yay! Great. Halo Five. Uh, and this, well, just wait uh, with the with the update coming here soon. And some of those, uh, they at least said for when Halo Three ODST drops, some of those save films are going to possibly be corrupted. So maybe another round of corrupted game modes and files. Oh, jeez. So if if you've been doing if you've been doing your resurrection stuff, you might want to wait till it comes out next week and see what you have to re-resurrect again. <laughs> Well, this weekend I'm going to go through and clean up uh, some uh, games that I haven't been playing. Uh, stuff that's just not really friendly for, you know, the type of game nights we have. And gotcha. also try to maybe find some not broken game types or take and fix the game types and put them in my personal library instead of the downloaded copy. Oh yeah, for Halo Five. So we'll see. Yeah. That's uh that's one of the weekend's projects. I've got only like twenty seven other ones <laughs> that are actually probably really more important than fixing game types. Well, you got plenty of time at home. <laughs> so, okay, well good. Very nice. Uh we will have an, another poll up for that on Discord tomorrow morning. For those of the listening to the live stream. Uh, for those listening to the download, we do the polls in Discord. I usually try to get those posted by midday Friday, if I remember. Sometimes they're posted late, like it was last week, like three hours before the game that actually was supposed to happen. That's all right. You weren't the only one that was late. Yeah. 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 Last Friday, I didn't get home. To, uh, I didn't get out of work until like six forty-five my time, which is seven forty-five on the East Coast, and. uh yeah, I had to kind of delay the start of game night because I had to have time to eat dinner. <laughs> that That's important. I'd say that's probably something good to wait for. You would like me when I'm hungry. Oh. You turn the bob then? Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Glad that that turned out well. So make sure you go over to the Discord and vote if you want to play Halo 5 or Halo MCC on Xbox. Mm-hmm. And then stay tuned for a following poll next week on Monday where we'll see if people want to take the opportunity that we will not be doing a podcast on Thursday to do a PC night then or to do it on Saturday next week. So stay tuned for that. Whatever works best for you. And that will also be on our Discord server. Uh, our Friday night game night is going to be on Xbox. So we'll just vote between Halo 5 and MCC. And then yep. for the PC game night, that will be in MCC. Uh, and we'll probably be doing some matchmaking mixed in with some customs as well. And Tom in chat's kind of alluding to something. Uh, he says he's still waiting for crossplay, which I don't think is in this update, but seems like with the Halo 4 update, it could be coming. Possibly. So the whole thing where it's PC or Xbox might not have to be a thing anymore if votes go to MCC. Exactly. Until they decide no, the next to thing I'll have to do is actually port Halo 5 over to 
PC as well. Right. At least, or at least support cross play for customs. Since you have Halo 5 customs at least on PC. True. You can do that. Like, if you, like, yes, it'd be nice to have the full game on PC, but even if you just cross play for customs, well, I'm, and not Forge, even, I'm not even saying the full game, just the, the matchmaking part of it. The, yeah. the systems are there. All they have to do is get, is let the game access the matchmaking. Uh, Cause all the information's there. They just have to give it the networking to be able to access those Xbox live, the Xbox live searches. It wouldn't surprise me that with the infinite delay, if they take the extra time to implement halo five on PC fully, like just use the same teams that have been working on MCC. Maybe, maybe it, it, it might, I mean, with with how much things, or with how many things they want to add to the MC to MCC overall, I don't and... see them doing a lot with Halo Five other than squashing any bugs that might pop up. At least between now and Infinite, uh, they've got a lot on their plate already. With getting Infinite ready to launch, which we don't know when Infinite's going to launch. They just right. said next year. They didn't say when next year. Right. You know, as it's far just, as we know, it could idea. come out February. But I, I hope, I honestly hope with Infinite that it's later in the year. I know nobody wants to hear that. But I want them to have the chance to be able to do the flighting that they had originally planned to do with Infinite. I to think get, everyone would want that. <laughs> well, to get the multiplayer out there and get it tested and make sure that it's, make sure that it's working. So that, especially since they have a brand new engine that's got, you know, that, running all all brand new code, I don't want them to have another MCC. I don't want them to launch a game yeah. and it immediately crash. I don't think it'll be as bad as MCC because MCC well, had no. the unfortunate... MCC was a unique situation. You had yes. four different game engines, well, five different engines, five. all that were never intended to work together. Which now runs really freaking well. Yeah. Well, technically you had four versions of the same engine and a fifth engine. Well, yeah, but I mean for for all purposes, yeah. it's four different engines. Five different engines. Yes. And I I get it. And you know, that was a neat situation. It was a very ambitious build. I just don't want them to have the problems like they did. I don't want them to have launch problems, like with MCC. I don't want there all of a sudden to be network issues with, you know, people just trying to find matches or just trying to get through the campaign, stuff like that. Yep. I think that makes sense. We'll see what happens. Uh, for Achieving Halo, we attempted to do some legendary uh, running times on Halo CE. Managed to knock down time on a couple of maps. It sucks when you're within a minute of three hours, but still you're not under three hours yet. I am at three hours and 52 seconds right now. Yeah. I just have to shave off 52 seconds off of one of my campaign missions to get that freaking achievement, and we didn't get it. So I, unfortunately, this is one of the first streams, if not maybe the first stream, I haven't actually gotten an achievement on an Achieving Halo stream. <laughs> well, you've got all the easy ones done. There's a couple of easy but grindy ones in matchmaking mm -hmm. I could do. Well, that's just it. Yeah. They're grindy. Uh, you know, right. you, you're you're unlikely to get them in a single stream. Yes. So that's going to be hopefully done this weekend. <laughs> hopefully, I can nail that one out and then start working on the Halo Two Legendary Time. So, if people want to come help me with that, that's on Sundays. At 10 p.m. Eastern. Over on the website, we have a new Machinima Monday from Riding Spartan again. And this one is a new trailer from The Great Isaiah. We've showcased one or two of his videos before. Uh, this is for Last Man Standing. Uh, this one's in some, uh, inspired by the Nightmare Films zombie matchmaking, for those that have seen that. So it, it's kind of a a tribute to that, but a little bit different storyline. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, then 
head on over to the Podtacular website and give it a watch. Over on the company commendations side of things, we are still working towards getting some of our commendations. We've actually had quite a few people request to join the Spartan Company, so thank you for those that mm-hmm. have recently requested to join. I think we have maybe three or four new people from last week Yeah, that have joined. On the commendations side of things, we have Splatters, another 150. Nice round number on that one. 150, that's not too far to go. Squishies! Yes. Then we have killing an enemy Spartan with a standard weapon. We currently have just over 20,000 of those to get. And then killing an enemy Spartan with a headshot. We have just over 22,000. Actually, just under 22,000 there. And then the last two are still the last two. (laughs) Killing Marines and Shoulder Bashes. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Long way to go on those. (laughs) One of these days, baby? Who knows? For Tales from the Foxhole, we don't have anything new. Bobby left his big wall of stuff last week. If you haven't seen any of those, then feel free to go check them out. Nothing in our Discord either. We do have a little game clips and screenshots section and a Tales from the Foxhole channel over on our Discord. So if anything happens that you want to share that is somewhat Halo related or Xbox related, then feel free to share it with us and we will talk about it on the show. Going on over to official updates, we have Halo 3 ODST coming to MCC on PC September 22nd. It is going to be here in less than a week of this recording. Five days. It's desperate Next times Tuesday. and they are the desperate measure. Yes. Prepare to drop. You know the music. Time to dance. So many good quotes from that game. <laughs> oh, I know. So many. You know the music. It's time to dance. Yep. Uh, for Halo 5 matchmaking, what do we got coming up? Well, for this weekend, September 17th, Forerunner Slayers rotates in, uh, in for core play. And then coming up <laughs> next week, <laughs> what? Forerunner Slayers just kind of. Yeah. 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 Me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then coming up next week, we have, uh, well, for September 24th, we have Halo 3 Throwback rotates in for Forerunner Slayer, and Dust's favorite Warzone Turbo goes live. Which I won't be here for. <laughs> I'll be on vacation. You'll be on vacation. Hey, speaking of so I'll have, I'll have, I'll have an excuse. I have a vacation to plan this year. I'm not going to go anywhere, but. I get to take vacation! Yay! Paid vacation! Sounds like your new job is paying off. Ha ha ha. Laugh at my joke, please. (laughs) The chat's probably like, why do I torment myself with this? (laughs) Why do I listen to these people with their bad jokes? Anyway. Uh, just for everybody's ist- information, I haven't had an actual vacation in the last uh, five years. Hmm. I've taken time off, but it's usually because someone's in the hospital, or I was in the hospital. So, yeah, it hadn't been fun. So, quick quick correction. Eric Yabu, uh actually gave us an update for Halo 5. They've swapped out Forner Slayer for ODST Slayer, according to Twitter. Oh. Well, the Twitter helps, helps if they put that in an update because that's where I copy and paste the calendar from. But eh. yeah, well, Twitter, Twitter says it's ODST Slayer now. I guess we could fire, fire up the game and look. ODST Slayer is fun. I've done that. It's I fun over ODST Forerunner Slayer. Slayer over Forerunner, Forerunner Slayer. That's for sure. Yes. Yes. And yes, Eric, could be very appropriate given that ODST comes out next week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's not, it's like they it's like they planned it. Uh, for the Master Chief Collection, September sixteenth, twenty twenty, which was yesterday, we got Shoddy Snipes rotates into the featured category. Griff Ball rotates out of the featured category. Me, uh, and that's it for playlist updates. Cool. With ODST coming out. We've got Halo 4 flighting just around the corner as well. That would be interesting. Yeah. So Postum re- Postums reminds everybody to make sure your Halo Insider profile is up to date. 
if you have gotten a console or a PC or want to add a console or PC to your Insider profile, then make sure you go on over to HaloInsider.com and make sure all of your information is up to date so you can be invited to flighting. It's the last game they're going to flight. The you know, very last one. This, this last flight, I was invited to the ODST flight on console, not on PC. Everybody I know was invited to the PC flight. I got invited to both, actually. PC and Steam. Well, well I should I should say I should say everybody that I know was playing the PC flight. Ah. The one I did the one I didn't get invited to. Yeah, that and... week that was the week when my computer blew up. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't so I played a... on the very last day. <laughs> I didn't I didn't get a chance to play any of it anyway because for the first three days of it, I had to wait for uh, my Xbox to actually download it. For three days? Well, yeah, it took it three days to figure out that, oh, hey, I need to grab this last piece of information. Oh. To where it would actually launch. Wasn't downloading properly. But I, I did get I did get to play a little bit of it. Uh, I goofed around in campaign a little bit, and it, it was fun. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any time to do any of the, the matchmaking with it, so... I'm hoping to get a little bit more time with Halo 4. Actually get in and get some playtime on Halo 4. Very nice. We'll see. It looks like it's going to be here pretty soon. Mm-hmm. On the MCC development side of things, we have a nice update. We have our first early look at the custom game browser. Mm-hmm. That's pretty exciting. Most definitely. There's some new screenshots that Postums has posted over on the forums. For those that are in the Twitch chat, I'll go ahead and post a link if you haven't seen these already. There's been plenty of YouTubers that have covered this topic well enough. But for those who want to see the screenshots them for themselves, then make sure you head on over to the forums. They have a new menu that they're replacing in custom games or, or adding to, to it. So normally when you go to custom games, um, I think you just go straight into selecting your map and, and game mode and doing that selection. But now there's actually going to be four options uh, for you to pick from when you select custom games. First one is going to be a quick match, then browse, filter, and create. And they're pretty self-explanatory, but quick match will find an available custom game that fits your filtered criteria and just drop you in kind of like a join in progress matchmaking mm -hmm. type of thing browse will actually let you browse a kind of a server browser type thing based on your filters as well filters you can change things like modes maps region game type player size which game specifically you want to be searching for and then create is where you just traditionally create a game uh, and then for MCC Legacy user-generated content, Postums posts a little update on things that have taken place when you've transferred files from 360 over to MCC. For those that have done the transfer, you would have had to get the files copied to your Xbox version of the game in your private files section uh, before they're made available to PC. If anyone has actually had those files transferred, but you haven't launched your Xbox, then you're going to have to do that before, uh, not before too long. Uh, it might be this, for this update. Didn't, he didn't say specifically if it was for this ODST update or not. But basically, if you have content that you had migrated from 360 versions of the game, then you need to log into the Xbox One version of the game soon as the last part of the <clears throat> one-time migration. Oh, it's actually going to be in November. So November this year is, is when it's going to end. So make sure you finish up that migration before you lose all that wonderful content. Yes. You got to load up into your Xbox profile. That way you at least have it before it can come mm -hmm. over to PC. Um, so yeah, that's it from the MCC development update. We've got a couple of Waypoint articles. There was a community spotlight today, which we're going to hold off on with uh, DJ not being here and 
since last time he entertained us with his little story through his pictures and selections and whatnot. I want to kind of wait and save that for him to do it again. <laughs> that, that was kind of fun. We do have a HCS-related announcement. The Pro Series is moving back to Halo 5. So the Halo 3 MCC Pro Series ended this past weekend. It was a very short Pro Series for MCC. There's still a lot of interest for those wanting to participate in Halo 3 tournaments. So that's still going to take place in uh, North America. Uh, it's going to be all open tournaments, though. And the prize pool for each tournament is going to be now $1,000. And this will be taking place every weekend starting Friday, September 25th and going through December 11th. And that's still Halo 3 on PC. Uh, Halo 5 Pro Series will be on Xbox. And there's going to be included other regions for that as well. So it's not just going to be limited to North America, but it's going to open up to the LATAM, EMEA, and Australia and New Zealand regions as well. For the North American format, is going to start off with two open tournaments and then go back into the alternating state of open tournament, pro tournament, uh, so on and so forth. Every season will be f uh, five weeks or six weeks, depending. North America starts on September 26th with uh, an open tournament, and then every weekend will continue until November 7th for the season championship. And then that will restart again on November 14th with the first Open for the next season with that season championship on December 12th. All Open tournaments will be $1,000 prize pool. All Pro tournaments will be $5,000 prize pool. And the season championship will be $10,000 prize pool. Uh, for the LATAM, Australia, New Zealand, and EMEA regions, there will be all Open tournaments. After multiple weeks, the top eight teams from the final open tournament will qualify for the season championship. And the season championship will feature a round robin group stage, which will feed into a four team single elimination. This is also broken down into two seasons, uh, kicking off September 26th, and then these season championships will be the week before the North American season championships on October 31st and December 5th. Uh, all open tournaments will be $1,000 prize pool, and the season championships will be $5,000 prize pool for those regions. Uh, registration for the pro tournaments will happen on Faceit. They'll continue to be the partner for these pro series tournaments. So if you're interested in making a team, then head on over to halo.gg slash h5 pro series and get your team registered up to play. We've got a couple of social posts. You want to take those or you want me to get them? We've got Today in Halo and then another little yeah. announcement. Well, let's see. For the Today in Halo, 14th of September 2010, 10 years ago, we stepped into some shoes the rest of the squad would have gladly left unfilled. Here's to you, Halo Reach. Yeah, Halo Reach is 10 years old. It's almost a tween! Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Ten, 10 years. Yes. It's amazing I, how, how things, how time flies. Yes. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of Halo Reach and Halo 3 ODST art for this week's community spotlight. Probably. And then 343 is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month by supporting Latinos in gaming. They have an upcoming three-day event happening on October 9th through the 11th. And if you go to Latin Xing or XI or Latin XI in gaming, so Latin X in gaming slash Unidos online, uh, that is where you can find out more information about what the event is and what they're supporting and all that fun stuff. We've got a new 343 employee spotlight, and this one is Erica Martinez, who is a producer at the studio. That's another fancy term for professional cat herder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's been around the gaming industry for quite a while, and she's the first person I actually recognize that has been in an employee spotlight. <laughs> Go check that one out. 
And then 343 for three announced a partnership with Hex Brand to have Halo branded backpacks, duffel bags, and other bag type products. <laughs> Probably could have come up with a better way to say that. But they have a whole lineup of Halo themes. They're getting bagged. Oh. Ah, that's good. I'll take it. Um, they have a couple of different kinds of backpacks. They have a um, a sling bag. I want to get the duffel bag, but it's 150 bucks. Wow. Yeah, there's it's, there's some expensive stuff in here. Not- I'm sure it's I'm sure it's like probably muster brand quality type stuff. If anyone remembers the muster brand jackets, which unfortunately they don't sell anymore. But yeah, if you want some expensive Halo themed bag tech. Then head on over to hexbrand.com. Wow, 200 bucks for the Spartan one? Jeez. For the tech backpack? Yeah. The heck is yeah, it worth 200 bucks? It can carry an Xbox. I've got one from Dell that can do that. And it only <laughs> cost me $79. <laughs> Halo themed tea bags. That would be pretty cool, actually. That would actually be hilarious. That would be. I have Halo tea bags. Well, yeah, just like at the end of the string where it usually has a little label, just have the Halo symbol on it. There, there you go. It's a Halo tea bag. Yeah, there you go. Instead of green tea, it'd be Spartan tea, or Mjolnir tea, something like that. Grunt nipple tea could be purple. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Um. Yes, please. <laughs> On the community highlight side of things, no new articles, but for those that are forging for the Forge Hub Halo 3 Forge the Fight contest, submissions are due this Saturday at midnight Eastern. So that's at the end of the day Saturday, 11.59 p.m. So yes, if, if anyone is forging for that, make sure you get your submissions in. If you're listening to this podcast via download, Too then late. your time is probably run out. <laughs> I might get this one out early, depending on how long the show is, since we're not talking about too much tonight. But, yeah, deadline is Saturday. On the community content side of things, we've got quite a few things going on. We've got HCS Pro Talk, episode number 144. So what happens now? And this was posted before the MCC Pro Series announcement that was made. Was it today? Either today, either today or yesterday, so I'm sure they'll talk about Have that more. One. On, on on next week, because <laughs> I'm I'm guessing probably what they ended up doing was talking about well, the pro series is over. What's next? Well, I'm actually kind of glad to see him go back to Halo Five. Me too. That actually brought some controversy up on Twitter. I really don't <laughs> care. I don't really. I I honestly don't care what people think about Halo Five. Halo Five is a good game. It when is. When it comes to multiplayer. I really enjoy it. For me, it's it's my favorite multiplayer to play uh-huh. next to Halo 2. I really enjoy it. Well, I mean, you know, Halo, I mean, as far as multiplayer, I like Halo 5 more than Halo 2, but I mean, Halo 2's up there. I mean, at this point, the difference between how Halo 2 and Halo 5 plays is, is pretty different. But, like, my oh, favorite multiplayer to play before... When, I come, I mean, when it comes to... With with the com- comes to the way you play Halo Two and the way you play Halo Five, they they are they are nothing alike. Other than they both involve shooting, that's about the only common thing they have. There, there's some commonalities as far as like strategy for weapon control and and blocking pass and whatnot. But yeah, from a movement perspective, that's different, and there are definitely well, some different I mean, strategies. I should say from how you the achieve sandbox. the same goal is totally different. Yeah, and I, you know, honestly, like Halo Five. I like the way that, I like the pace of the game. Whenever I go back and play MCC and play the older games, I I go right back into where I, what I was thinking when I was playing the games when they're brand new. Is that the matches just seem to take forever? Now, I mean, even if a match is only ten ten minutes long, it seems like it took forty <laughs> to me. I mean, you know, just they the matches never felt very intense. As far as pace. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah it's, well, and that was a different generation of the first person mm-hmm. shooter genre, too. 
I think that's something that a lot of people don't appreciate is how things have moved on from 2000s first person shooters to 2010s first person shooters. Yeah. And you know what? At the end of the 2020s, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. We'll have grapple hooks. Question mark? Oh. Advanced mobility. Just continuing that trend. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there should there wasn't some tweaks that they could have done or they, some things they could have done differently in Halo Five. Part and charge is one of them. That is about the only ability I have a real problem with is the Spartan charge. I don't mind ground pound. I don't mind sprint. I don't mind the thruster pack or the hover or any of that stuff. The only one we really have a problem with is Spartan charge. Because they changed it from the beta. Yeah. If they'd have left it the way it was in the beta, I would have been perfectly happy with it. Same. Because in the beta, it was the perfect risk versus reward. Mm-hmm. It was. When they launched the game, they changed it enough where there wasn't enough risk when you go to Spartan Charge. Yeah. Where in the beta, if so, if you Spartan Charge somebody head on and they meleeed you, you lost. You had to catch them from behind. Mm -hmm. Well, now you can just run into them, run right into them, and you kill them. And they go flying. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Uh, it 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 seems very unbalanced and unbalanced in my opinion, and that is my opinion. But and I would agree with that. See, I'm glad to see HES moving back to Halo Five. Uh, I think it makes for no, not that Halo Three is a bad show, but I think Halo Five makes for a better show when it comes to actually watching the gameplay. To me, um, um it certainly, I think it certainly does. Hence the whole shroud tweet but mm -hmm. yeah going back to our podcast we have podcast evolved mission debrief episode 114 halo wars 2 last stand and episode 221 of the mainline show titled live monthly news i actually need to try to catch one of their live shows at some point from finish the fight we have episode number 41 mortal dictata from sacred icon halo we have episode 47 rubik's cube playa featuring dr phil no idea what that's about. Maybe they have a friend that's named Phil and he's a doctor. Could be. Maybe. And then Halo Outreach Podcast, episode 48. Infinite Weapon Skins and Halo MCC Crossplay discussion. Over on YouTube. Uh, let's see. What do I want to point out here? We've got a couple of Halo Reach, kind of like 10-year celebration type things from folks. Uh, Green Skull has a video kind of recapping his thoughts on the summit tweet and basically telling everyone to chill the heck out and an opinion's an opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From. I don't have a bleep button or I'd give you my opinion on that. Yeah. <laughs> From rejected shotgun. We have a video that's halo three new cut campaign levels discovery. And this actually leads into something else that, they've been working on on their Twitter account, which is kind of remaking the Guardian encounter that was cut from Halo 3's campaign. More on that in a little bit. That would be interesting. I don't know if you've been keeping up with his stuff on Twitter, but he's been making lots of progress on it, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, we've got Kevin Cool X doing a 10,000 subscriber special on his YouTube, doing a cover of Blow Me Away. We've got Marty O'Donnell showing off some of the videos from the Halo the Movies DVD. Mm -hmm. I one watched that very... one. There's, there was a couple of them I, ne I had never seen. There was... Or don't remember seeing. Let's put it that way. I don't remember seeing the, the was up. Um, that was one for me, too. Yeah, I don't remember seeing that one. What's up? What's up? If anyone hasn't seen that, just just Google "What's Up" on YouTube. You'll you'll find the commercial. What's up? Commercial. What's up? That should be the title of this podcast. What's up? Yep, yep. Where is he? Yeah, I I I am glad that that is not a thing anymore. Oh, why not? What's up? What's up? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm so glad that that the uh, the uh, people in general got over that one. I think it's funny. I love it. I I really enjoy it. It's funny until you hear it every day from okay. multiple people. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Walking to work. What's up? <laughs> like. <laughs> What's that? I'm just going to make that the title of this podcast now. <laughs> From Installation 00, we have the lore behind the brute ranks and armor. Or wait, no, that's wait, that's a bad copy that's, paste. That was Hidden Xperia. Yeah, I copy and pasted the wrong link. Um, we, sorry, it, it's supposed to be a most detailed breakdown of the soy, soy vev. The drop pod, which there's the Soyev. Yeah, the Soyev drop pod. So the uh, there's coffee. that one. And then oh. Hidden Xperia has the lore behind all the brute ranks and armor. And I think that's pretty much all the stuff on YouTube I wanted to touch on. Oh, uh, Defend the House had a new Halo 3 Mythbusters, Volume 5. Yes. So I'll, I'll throw that in there at the bottom of the list. They they're going through and they're remaking all their Halo Three Mythbusters episodes mm-hmm. in the MCC to see if all the myths still hold true. And Which they have for the most new, part they do. They have new tools this time, so yes, it does make things a little different. And there's some very small differences between the 360 and the MCC versions for all the games. Oh yes, well. Down into the artwork section, we have the Lone Wolf from Archangel 470. This is his tribute to Reach turning 10 years old. Mm-hmm. Which is we have an awesome Tom- picture. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. I guess I'll, I'll just go ahead and drop all these links into the Twitch chat. We have Tom Jurassic's Halo 3 ODST tribute. And this is very appropriately uh, framed with... I don't know if that's just kind of... Photoshopped rain with a blur in the background, but you have Rookie with it looks like uh, maybe Mickey and Dutch in the background. Yeah. They're blurred. Looks like Mickey and Dutch. Yep. No, I think you got the garden hose out. <laughs> I mean, if it is actual water, then yeah, that's probably what he did. Then for uh, Vin Gattuso, it seems those units have a priority task. This is kind of a mix of things, because that's a line from Halo 3, but we -hmm. have Falcons and Liches. Falcons being from Halo Reach, and Liches being from Halo 4. So lots of of cross-pollination here, but... And it looks like Owen's standing there. Yes. With Guilty Spark. Well, Mm -hmm. with a monitor. (laughs) So we've got uh, that from Vin Gattuso. Really cool stuff. Uh, from that. And then we've got Pixel Flare, another screenshot of his work in progress stream setup. And then um, Ezel VFX has released the official Sins of the Prophet key art in 4K, which looks incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely does. It's an amazing piece of art. It really is. If you guys have a chance to go Look at it. I highly recommend it. Ascend Hyperion has a couple of commissions that he has worked on as well. So go and check those out. Over on the community musings side of things, we've got a Halopedia Trivia Tuesday. Would you like to take that one, GT? Sure. Oh, before we go any further, back to the Defend This House Mythbusters, they actually showed in this video that the tank actually doesn't have a projectile. Wait, I missed that. Yeah. They actually slowed down the tank rounds, and there is no projectile there. They, they There is nothing, you know, like when you fire a sniper rifle, there is an actual bullet. But uh-huh. When you fire a tank round, there's no bullet. No shot. So it's just a contrail? Yep. Just a contrail. Huh. Isn't that amazing? I wonder if it's that... I wonder if it's that way in all Halo games. Uh, probably. The reason that that popped up gives the per, the picture right up here at the top is Marines standing in front of a tank. Fair enough. Yeah. Halo PD is Trivia Tuesday. 
Did you know that Halo 2 had a large number of cut campaign levels and that multi and multiplayer maps? Some are well known, but there are several that you may not know about. Uh, you can read about them at halopedia.org slash cut Halo 2 level. Most of the Bungie titles had campaign missions or a few campaign missions that were cut. Yeah. Well, yeah, so. the second half of uh, Halo 2 wound up being in Halo 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mean the, the last two-thirds? <clears throat> um, I forgot how much of it I did I thought it was only like a only like the the first third of the game was supposed to be like the Halo 2 levels yeah I thought that I thought what Halo 2 was planned to be and what it came out to be was a third of what was planned yeah but anyway that's beside the point that would have been a long campaign if they managed no to kidding. cram what was Halo 2 and then if Halo 3, I guess, was the length of two full games and do that. I wonder if it would if it would have even fit. Because in Halo know. 2, they were they were still using CDs, weren't they? For the game? No, they were using DVDs. They were okay, yeah, they were using DVD, DVD. I mean, original Xboxes well, were on DVDs. Yeah. I don't think that's, I don't think Xbox right. games were ever on CD. Oh. It's not like they broadcast that on the discs or anything. <laughs> let's see where was i oh yeah but uh, definitely head over to uh halo p and check those out yep and then we've also got uh kind of what i alluded to earlier rejected shotgun has been working on bringing the Foyus guardian mission back into halo 3 and if you've been following him on twitter there's been a lot of community interest in the work that he's been doing but Mm -hmm. apparently a lot of the AI scripting was still for, there for it and the Guardian uh, was actually found by another community member in a game, one of the miscellaneous game files within Halo 3 so managed to kind of export it uh, from that mission import it into Guardian and he's been going and kind of customizing or tailoring a campaign experience around this Guardian it had AI for firing weapons and uh, moving around, but turns out, so there's going to be a couple of things I'm going to rattle off here about it. The holographic thing in the top middle of Epitaph is this Guardian. It's basically a holographic outline of what this Guardian was. Mm -hmm. They have gone and added basically Guilty Sparks laser as the primary weapon for for this Guardian. Uh, Vic Delion, when he saw this, also replied saying that the Guardian that he ended up pulling out and putting in is ex almost exactly what they had envisioned when the Guardian was first conceptualized in Halo 2, except the Guardian was going to be much larger in scale from that. Uh, and then with all the recent discoveries, Halo PD has also updated their Forest Guardian article <laughs> from just a lot of the findings that, that has been made through this effort. So I would definitely recommend going to follow or look at Rejected Shotgun on Twitter. Look at the thread that they've been working on. Been half kind of messing around with it, half really intending to add features to it and make it kind of a campaign mission experience. They've added things like an EMP effect to it, energy shields, AI movement to it. So lo lots of interesting things for this guardian experience that'll be really interesting i'm looking i'm looking forward to seeing some uh seeing some gameplay of it yeah so check that out if you have not seen it they will have a video up on it at some point i think they basically said that for the time being they're they're trying to just kind of clean up what they want to do for the video um the experience they're working on too is it's basically a part of the Covenant campaign mission and then just adding a lot of the Guardian effects in there like the, the green haze and trees and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So we'll be keeping an eye on this one for sure. And then to wrap things up, there is a new Iron Hammer trailer. We're not doing a fan project or fan mod update this week, but since it was something that I got 
window just from my YouTube subscription box, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, I'd mention it. And I'll mention it again when we do our next fan project update. So yeah, that's all we have for tonight. Really short podcast as we head into a break for the next week. And with DJ not being here, not a lot to do. Hopefully when we come back, we'll have a few guests lined up. So we'll be kicking it back into full gear once we come back from the break. Again, no podcast next week, but we will have a poll out on Monday to see if we want the PC game night to be on Thursday or Saturday. So make sure you uh, check that out on our Discord. And if you have any custom games that you like to play, be sure to send me a message on Twitter at Godzilla Todd. For Halo 5, please include links to the game type and map. And for MCC, uh, let me know the forger's name or gamer tag, and then the uh, give me the name of the map and game type that you want to have me look at, and we'll get those checked out. Very good. You can find Podtacular on social media. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also find us on your favorite podcasting services. We are on Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. Tune in, or, or now that Amazon's actually announced podcast support and Amazon Music, we'll make sure about getting on the Amazon Music. <laughs> and, of course, iTunes. If there is a place where you normally listen to podcasts that we are not, please let us know. And we will try to work on getting the podcast on that platform. You can also find us on our Discord server, join our Spartan company, or join our Xbox club as well. You can just find those by searching for Podtacular. And for our Discord, go to podtacular.com slash Discord. That's where we'll have our vote for Frag and Friday, which happens every Friday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. For those that are wanting to participate in the game night, we have a vote for either MCC or Halo 5 on Xbox One. So make sure you head on over to the Discord to make your vote. And then on Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern we hop on to get some achievements in Halo. We've been doing MCC lately, trying to get legendary times under three hours for the last three million games that I need achievements for. And for helping me, I'll help you with achievements. So <laughs> come on over and help me, and we'll help you get some achievements too. And then for the podcast, we record live on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern right here on Twitch. Yes, Prestige, we'll, 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 get, you, we'll get you taken care of. And then you can support the podcast through a number of different ways. You can subscribe to us on Twitch. You can also donate to us through PayPal directly if you would rather send us money directly. You can also support us through Amazon through our affiliate link. So any purchases that you make by going through podtacular.com slash Amazon before you check out, we get a small commission off of that. And then you can support us by becoming a patron over on Patreon. Shoutouts to Confal, Frizzled, and pins for being loyal patrons over there. Thank you for keeping the lights on here over at PodTech. Like I said, we will be off next week. We will be back in a couple of weeks. Hopefully we'll have DJ back and weather through the fires that are ravaging the U.S. West Coast. Please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. And we will catch you all, hopefully either on game night or next time we're on for the podcast. Keep safe, everybody, and keep on fragging. What's up? What's up?